Hello, hello, this is 20 minutes of talking about my book and its characters. My book, called Magical Dreams, is about five magic-born kids that all live in an anti-magical society. Today, I'm going to talk about the sexualities, ages, and overall character traits. For some more sketches and just overall drawings of these OCs, feel free to follow my Instagram. Now, let's get on to the video. This is my unofficial, official favorite character, Aki Jobin. She was the first character that I ever designed, and I'll insert her old design somewhere in the video. She's the oldest of the main five and is currently 18 years old. She was Aero Ace, which means that she is aromantic asexual. For anybody who isn't familiar with these terms, basically she feels no sexual romantic attraction, and she has a mind control power. She can control any living thing and turn off their powers and control their bodies as long as she is alive and awake, even if she is not directly in the vicinity of them. There's some drawbacks of her powers, in that if the more people that she controls, the more energy it takes from her body, and the more of it's her soul she, that is taken from her. I'll talk about that later. She is trained in swords, different types of spells, and has a scythe named Thomasy, which is her main weapon, who will be put on the screen. Thomasy, I like to imagine, collects the souls of people that Aki has killed. Best way I can describe it. So, she powers her own soul with other people's souls. So, whenever she uses her powers more and more, it takes her soul, takes part of her soul, so she has to take other people's souls to regenerate energy. If there are any Soul Eater fans watching, you definitely have a good eye, because Thomas C is loosely based off of Soul's scythe form, which is where I took inspiration. Aki is a... Whenever she was a kid, she was an aloof child. She was pretty small and was easy to control, but as she got older, she got more independent and realized that she didn't need to look the way that people wanted her to. She slowly became more confident in herself and her powers and realized not to let anybody boss her around and to stick to her close friends. She realizes that she needs to help her friends as long as she is around. Next up, we have the actual, official, main character, Haruhiriko. Currently, he's a 15-year-old and is bisexual. His power is called solid merging. Basically, he can merge anything, like adding a blade onto a sword permanently. One secret that he has is that he can transfer things like blood or skin to other people. Now, he was probably the second character that I had trouble coming up with. I did about four or five rough drafts of him, and none of them really seemed to fit. It was whenever I came up with the idea of him possibly having heterochromia. So his left eye is a greenish hazel color, and the other is a light blue. If you notice during the coloring stage, his bang tips have been bleached. His hair was cut bleached by and colored by another character, who will come up near the end of the video. A little inspiration for anybody that is writing a book. If the character design isn't going just right and doesn't really seem to fit in with the other characters, what I do is that I imagine how they would interact with the other characters. By doing this, you can kind of imagine how this person would look. Like, if you're aesthetic, as if they're super kind, you can make them softer looking. If you imagine them being something like a knight, foreshadowing, you can make them a bit rougher looking. Or, in my case, you can make them look like a pretty boy and make them like look super nice, but the personality could be completely different. Haru was also one of the harder ones to come up with a personality with. At first, I wanted him to be a bit tougher, lift anything, doesn't talk about his emotions, MC. But then I realized that that's boring. And so I made him a bit kinder, but I didn't make him like a super soft, kind kid. I made him like able to defend himself, kind of. So he really likes to help his friends, and I just imagine him being super kind and that he just wants to help people overall. He just he just wants to protect his friends. So the first thing that you might notice with this particular artwork is that it doesn't seem to fit in with the line art that is with the other characters. That is because I realize that I haven't drawn any, and I mean any, digital art of this very specific character in months. So all of it looked very outdated and just didn't look right. So I apologize for the child that is being drawn. <laughs> this is Kenji Yoshiaksu. He is 15 and uses he-they pronouns. Their power is metal manipulation. 
they can control any type of metal and make new things with this power. Like, if he, he can basically, like, mold new swords, new knives, stuff like that. He, and he can fix broken ones. There is one very, very specific drawback of his power that gets very important as the story progresses. In that, because he can mostly manipulate iron, the iron levels in his body are very low. And he tends to pass out if overworked, which happens a couple times in the stories. And that's where Haru gets very, very important. That's where he started to come up with the personality of his friend would need him. So if Kenji worked himself too hard, he would pass out and that he would get very low iron. Now I like to imagine that where these kids are in the type of school environment that they are, they wouldn't really have anything like iron pills to help Kenji, so... Haru basically just has to transfer the iron in his blood to Kenji's, which kind of traumatizes Kenji's little sister in the beginning of the story, because she hasn't really seen it happen. She's heard of it, but she hasn't really seen it. She will be introduced soon. Kenji, although he is, at first, looks very, very sweet, and I really like him. He's one of my favorites that I've ever designed, design-wise and personality-wise. He's very strong. He can definitely fend on his own. Next up, we have the very kind and sweet Tadako Yoshiaksu. She's the younger, seven-year-old sister of Kenji Yoshiaksu, and her power is Cloud Illusions. Now, if you've ever seen that one singular Gravity Falls episode where the love god will use his powers to basically give people illusions of people that love them, well, Tadako can do something like that. She can show people's future or she can show people's past, even if she doesn't know those people. She can basically mess with anybody that she really wants to, as long as she knows one singular thing about them. Like, if she knows that a character grew up without parents, she can manipulate that into a twisted dream reality of watching that person watch their parents die. It's a very villain-type power, and I think it's perfect for this sweet little girl. Also, the mask that she is drawn on in this specific image doesn't have anything contributing to the story. I just thought it would be really cute if I turned a sketch of her into a mask. But she, unlike her brother, who has dark blue eyes, which match with the hair, to add to the villain-esque type of power that she has, she has a bright pink eyes that look almost just like a magenta blood color. So, like, if she does, she looks exactly like her brother, other in the way that her eyes are bright pink. I like to imagine that her and Aki's eyes will glow in the dark. That isn't set in stone yet, but I just, I love the idea of this cute little girl having, like, bright red eyes at night. But overall, this girl is just super sweet, and she's trained in healing and potion making. But she has a very villain power. Last, but definitely not least, is my favorite albino, Kana Katsume. She was born with albinism. Albinoism? I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but she has it. It gives her very, very pale skin. She sunburns very easily, which goes along with her power, named Lunar Activities. Her power lets her draw strength from the moon. She is trained in boxing and gets even better at it whenever the moon goes down. She can only use her power at night unless it's a late moon and the moon comes out early or it's just out early in the morning or early at night before the sun sets. But it's very rare in the world that they live in. And the very dense forest that they live near doesn't really allow her to do that that often. This has led to a very unhealthy power dynamic that she has created in her head. And although she is a very sweet character, this power dynamic has also led to her slight disliking to Kenji, because, not very surprising, she has a very small but very important crush on Haru. But due to this power dynamic, she can't really do anything for training, and it doesn't help that, even though it doesn't really show it in this exact picture, she's a scrawny kid. She can lift up to 400 times her weight whenever the full moon is out. If whenever the full moon isn't out, she's a lot weaker than she usually is, which also doesn't feed into the power dynamic.
To let our editors tip, I'd like to also imagine that her eyes would glow whenever it's a full moon and she's using her the full extent of her power. I just, I think that would be a really cool idea where you just see these three girls with bright eyes. Now I will be moving on to the two characters that aren't really written about as much in this book, but are so important, and I can't stress enough how, much, how important they are. First off, we have Ivana. Nobody really knows her last name, because whenever her parents abandoned her at the school, she wasn't given a proper last name. She was just dropped off with the Norwegian name Ivana, and then was just left there. The people at the school came to the decision to keep her, because there was a note left there saying that they couldn't deal with a child that had magical abilities. And her ability wasn't anything like Kana's or Kenji's or Tadako's, where it could actually be used to, like, hurt people if they really wanted to. Her power is actually the opposite of that. She has the power of healing. She could heal any physical injuries or any types of diseases. She isn't immortal. She gets injured very easily. She's a very frail girl. And overall, she's just very... She's trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But compared to the other kids, they can't. she can't really use her powers to defend herself as much, besides just repeatedly healing herself. This is why she's really doing healing classes. She's learning how to heal people without having to use her powers, because some people, if powers are used in them, it could physically injure them even more, or lead to mental deterioration. Due to this healing power, and her not being as strong as the other kids her age, like Aki, she is somewhat bullied, but the next character that is going to be brought up definitely makes sure that that doesn't happen as much as most people would like. Ivana is very sweet. Her and the next character are childhood best friends with Aki. The very anticipated so-and-so next character has arrived. This is Brisa, and like Ivana, she also didn't have a last name whenever she was given to the school, so her parents wouldn't be able to have Brisa given back to her. Sadly, it isn't that uncommon for that to happen at the school. A lot of kids' parents can't deal with the fact that their kids have powers, or they just live in a world where they can't accept their kids' powers. A lot of places are more magic accepting than others, but in Brisa's case, where she used to live, it was definitely not magic accepting. So as soon as her parents found out that she could use magic, her parents kind of just left her there. They just, they made sure that nobody could get to her, and they just kind of abandoned her there. It was for her own good, and Brisa understands that. But sometimes, every time she thinks about it, it still makes her sad. As you can see now, with the coloring stage, Brisa has vitiligo, which is a skin condition that affects the melanin in your skin, making it either lighter or darker. Brisa's power is teleportation, and you can imagine that her age is close to Ivana's, so she is actually 19, so technically she should have already graduated from the school. But due to her power of time travel, she can technically look as young as she wants and travel back to time in school. She is waiting for whenever Ivana graduates, and the most iconic thing that she will ever say is that she is so excited for her and Ivana to make a last name together. They are dating. She is super excited for the future where she can propose to Ivana, and they can both belong together and finally have last names. Up now, we have the also anticipated night character that I was talking about whenever I was talking about Haru. So, this is Izumi. His power is a mix between ice and fire. And I know that that sounds really weird, like ice and power don't really fit together. But, Izumi can make a cold flame, as he likes to call it. It's basically a flame that when you hold it up to yourself, it could either give you frostbite and burn you at the same time. So it's very hard to treat wounds that are given by Izumi, which is why he is the kingdom's and the prince's personal knight. I will say I came up with his design on the spot. He was also very hard to design for because I realized while I was writing him 
that I didn't actually um, come up with a solid design for him. I never came up with a design for him, so whenever I just started writing about him, I was like, oh no, I forgot to give him a design. <laughs> Which became very difficult, but whenever I came up with the idea that, wait a second, hair covering the eye, the hair strands on the side, longer hair, which I absolutely love. I was like, oh, this could be great. So there's actually a reason why Azumi covers his right eye, and that is because of an incident that happened with Aki and Tamasi whenever they were young. They were training, and one day Aki accidentally slipped and left a cut across Azumi's eye. He didn't lose it, but he is blind in that eye. So he figured, why not make it look better and more stylish if I just cover it instead of just leaving it. And it looks much better than him just leaving it uncharted. The other scar that he has is from his being a knight. In order to be a royal knight, they have to have a scar across their nose to show themselves. <laughs> I would personally love to apologize for the smiley face thing that shows up at the beginning of this part of the video, but I personally find it hilarious, so I'm keeping it. This is Rai, and he is the prince character. He is also Izumi's fiance, because why not? And they're absolutely sweet together. He is currently 22, while Izumi is 23, and he, Aki, and Izumi are childhood best friends, meaning they grew up together. So he had to watch the incident with Izumi's eye. Being a royal, it isn't really common for a full-blooded prince to be engaged to a knight, but it was his personal knight and his parents are perfectly fine with it, as long as he's happy. The kingdom, however, isn't too happy with it. There's nothing they can really do about it because it's the prince. He kind of makes the rules once he gets married and becomes king. But Rai is very liked in his kingdom. Aside from the whole being gonna get married to a guy thing, they really love him. Here comes the part that I was dreading. I had to come up with a power for him, and I also had to come up with a name. So I'm going to be very sad whenever I say this, but I created this story about a year and a half ago, and for about that entire time, he didn't have a name. I just called him The Prince and everything, so Azumi had a name, but he just had to be The Prince. But I was like, he needs an actual name. But he was born without a power. He is the first soon-to-be king that does not have a power in his family. Which, even though he's loved by the kingdom, it is a very controversial thing. But he's loved anyway. 